In this tutorial, you learn to create light cycle effects as seen in video and arcade games and in the movies. The effects you learn to create include animating the light cycles, animating the light trails, and making materials glow. In the end, you will shatter a light cycle into thousands of pieces using a particle system. This Part 1 movie is an overview of what needs to be done. It also serves to explore the scene you will be working on. The scene uses Mentor Ray as a rendering engine. This is required for the type of glow effects you will be creating. The scene shows a stadium, simple plane primitives for the ground, and a few animated cameras, among other things. The cameras and their targets were animated using simple keyframing methods and we won't dwell on that here. This is an intermediate level tutorial and it assumes you already know how to keyframe the position of an object in time. In fact, let's hide the cameras category to remove them from view. The other, more important scene elements include two light cycles and two splines to use as paths. These two splines will serve a dual purpose. First, they will be used to constrain the light cycle so that they travel along a predetermined trajectory, and then they will also be used as paths for creating and animating lofts, which will serve as light trails. The creation of the splines is pretty straightforward. They are created using the line tool in corner-to-corner -corner mode. Hold the shift key whenever a straight horizontal or vertical segment is needed. At the vertex level, the fillet tool can be used to round off corners. Lastly, at the segment level, segments need to be subdivided to ensure they are more or less the same size. At the very least, you don't want to have segments that are too long. This is important for the animated lofts to work properly later on. The last item of importance, arguably the most important in the scene, is the light cycle itself. There are two of them, each made of a body and two wheels. To ensure the wheels move with the body, you can select the wheels and hierarchically link them to the body. Let's take a look at one of the light cycles, as the second is simply an identical clone of the first. Double-click the body of the blue light cycle to select all its components and then isolate the selection. Let's explore the modeling process that took place here. Select the front wheel and then press F4 to view the underlying geometry. In the Modify panel, notice the object has a Turbo Smooth modifier. Turn that off to see the base geometry. This object was initially constructed using a cylinder primitive. At first, the cylinder represented half the wheel. It was then tapered in an inward curve and then converted to an editable poly. From then on, it was fine-tuned with poly commands such as insets, bevels, and chamfers. Most importantly, polygons had to be separated by different ID numbers to make room for multiple materials to be applied later on. This was done by first ensuring all polys were on the same material ID, such as number 1, and then selecting those polygons that will ultimately have a self-illuminated glowing material and set them on a different ID number, such as 2. The selection of multiple polygons here can be done the manual way, using the control key, or it can be done by selecting a ring of edges and then control clicking the polygon icon to convert the selection. Finally, the symmetry modifier was used on the object's local z-axis to make the full wheel. More details were added as needed before ultimately adding a turbo smooth modifier. 
the rear wheel was created as an instance of the front wheel, but then scaled on its width to be narrower. The advantage of using this technique is that the instance status between the two objects is preserved so that a change on one is seen on the other. The body of the light cycle is a slightly different matter. Although it was built using the usual poly-editing techniques, it didn't start with a volume primitive. Instead, it started as a simple small flat plane with no subdivisions. The plane was then converted to an editable poly, and then, at the segment level, shift move was used to create polygon extensions from the original one. Vertices were fine-tuned, edges were bridged after that, and edges were connected for more detail. Again, it was important to remember to separate faces that are meant to have different materials applied to them. As we take a look at the light cycle body, notice that there are four distinct material IDs set for the various polygons. In this case, ID number 2 is set to receive the self-illuminated glow, just like it was with the wheels. Enable the turbo smooth modifiers on the body and the wheels, and exit isolation mode. The rest of the scene includes the stands and the stadium lights on top. The individual stadium lights started out as a box that was edited into the wanted shape. Duplicated and ultimately converted as one mesh. The stands were created by first creating two shapes one was a simple arc, the other closed line representing the stand's cross section. The arc was then selected and a sweep modifier was applied, with the stand's cross section as a custom section. From there on, it was converted to an editable poly so that details can be added and faces separated by IDs to accommodate multiple materials. After that, it was radially duplicated and collapsed as one mesh. And with this overview of the scene, we now move to the second part of the tutorial, where you apply materials to various objects.